Today, folks, this market absolutely sucks. I mean, did you catch Apple's event yesterday? Ooh, watches, ooh, iPhones, nothing new, boring. I'm gonna talk to you about how I wanna get rich in this ma macro environment, baby. There's some real opportunity out there, especially if you are a dividend lover, the higher interest rated market, tearing those companies down because most of them are infrastructure heavy debted base. We'll talk about these tech companies as well, of course. Apple, Tesla, I do wanna get some entry on those to some way, to some fashion within my portfolio as I try and figure out how I'm gonna get back into my TFSA because I got no money in there right now. Break some of that down. But we should probably talk about the inflation, baby. Before we get into these individual stocks and what I want to do with my portfolio, take a look at the S&P 500 because first and foremost, guys, it's been a long time since we hit all-time highs, hasn't it? It's almost been two damn years I've been making videos and I haven't been able to pronounce all-time highs, money printed, baby. Let's get it. Uh, we can't get it. Uh, I don't know if the market's going to hit all-time highs. I had a prediction that it would be the lower half of the market that would push us all the way up there because I think tech's kind of had it to run for the rest of the year could be wrong about that but i don't think these lower half stocks can rally without inflation coming down and interest rates starting to get cut i mean this is going to be the first time if we go two full years uh without getting an all-time high we haven't seen that basically since the 2008 financial crisis i don't think we're in a lost decade like some people are predicting i don't think we're going to see like a dot-com era where nothing happens for 10 or 15 years but a lot of this is going to be defined by what goes on with the inflation and the u.s released cpi no surprise canada is the bellwether for all of this i mean canada had the exact same inflation rate. They paused on the interest rate hikes, and it's likely the Fed's going to do the same, 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 same damn thing because shelter is the defining factor of inflation right now, and it hasn't baked into the economy. When you raise the friggin' rates, it's no surprise mortgages cost more, or the landlord's got to raise that monthly rent on the tenant, right? And that takes time to bake in. That's why I think they're pausing, and it's likely, I'm hoping, it tampers by the end of the year because that means probably by summer, spring of next year, we'd probably start seeing cuts. They're only going to wait a quarter or two if things persist to be consistent at around that point to, you know, or two to 3% inflation. That's, that's when they'll be like, okay, we've done our job. Let's lower the rates a bit. That's when money starts baking into companies. Because think about the refined and dining nature of companies right now, layoffs. You're talking about doing everything they can to bring up that EPS because I mean, even companies like TELUS, I love the telecom giants, but they're paying out like half a million dollars a quarter right now in interest, which is something they haven't experienced before, right? So keep an eye on this because this is the only catalyst that's going to come into play for any real perpetual gains, I think, into the future. But that is a good thing for you. As boring as that makes the market, these are the times to load up. Now let's talk about loading up and what I want to do in some of these individual stocks because Apple right now, abysmal, man. People are so bored of these events. They're never exciting anymore. I mean, the VR, yeah, that was kind of cool, but people seem to be over it so quickly because iPhones were boring. They really fixated on the Apple Watch, which to be honest, really gives you a, a defining factor of what Apple thinks is going on in the economy. They're going to promote what they think, you know, basic people are going to be buying. And in this kind of semi- quasi recessionary environment, they're going to start with entry level products that don't cost an arm and a leg because let's be real, MacBooks are way too expensive. People aren't replacing those as often. There's not enough innovation in iPhone. So what did they premiere through this whole entire event? The Apple Watch, because again, more affordable. I think they did the most upgrades to this watch, some really cool features, really pushing the health and safety side of their business. So yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if their earnings for the last quarter of the year, Christmas is probably going to be pretty underwhelming to say the least. It's probably going to reflect what we've seen over the last few quarters. But again, I like Apple. It's good that it's boring. It's good that we're kind of in this recessionary environment. The stock can come down a bit because long term, you want a boring company like Apple because people are still going to replace their iPhones, their MacBooks, and their watches. The ecosystem is alive and well, even though the product innovation is a tad bit boring to say the least. Tesla. Now, this is the most speculation of the innovative stocks because this stock ain't going anywhere for the next quarter. I mean, Elon said, hey, we're doing factory ramp ups. There's some extra costs coming to play. Don't expect much out of this next quarter. Quarter. So what's driving this volatility? Well, speculation, right? Speculation, baby. That's what Tesla's based on. But people are trying to speculate five, 10 years out how many cars are going to be sold, when self-driving is going to take over. They're going to be leveraging that software to other, you know, automakers. I mean, everyone is just, that's what's driving this insane volatility. These 25, 30% mood swings every few months, right? So I think Tesla, if you love it, I, I want to get it back into my portfolio. I've been debating on whether the growth aspect of my portfolio will be primarily in the QQQ ETF, or if I just want to pick up more S&P. 500 and maybe pair the S&P with maybe two or three tech companies that I like. And I still love Tesla here. I think it's a great company, even at the current valuation, if you have a long-term mindset. That's my opinion. I could be 
horribly wrong. But if you want to watch a really good interview, as of recently, we, we saw Elon Musk um, basically on the All In podcast here. Very intriguing conversations about, you know, the Ukraine stuff, the AI, the self-driving. Go check it out. It was really, really good. But yeah, we need to see what Tesla does. I hope it comes back down because I said basically anything under $200 would be great. I mean, that would be phenomenal. I don't know if we get there, though. Kind of always trades at a premium, right? But let's talk about these dividend players. Dividends are the only place we're going to collect juicy cash flow. And these are 20-year opportunities for dividend yields in some of these companies. And I always look for quality, right? Sometimes the higher yield doesn't always mean the best quality. But Hershey, my God, quality doesn't come much more, you know, monopolistic, you know, moated businesses as Hershey's is. But taking a look, this stock has plummeted. I mean, it's down 23% from those recent highs, wiping out the last few years of gains. And honestly, I think this is a great buying opportunity here. I, I talked about this on my live stream because, you know, the one chip challenge, unfortunately, a teenager passed away. They haven't done the autops yet, but obviously this is a Hershey-owned company. This company owns every damn holiday from, you know, Valentine's to Halloween. Every time you buy a Halloween box with Kit Kats and Reese's, I mean, they, they literally are the, they're the, what, the second largest snacking company in the U.S. and the number one in confection. I mean, they're crazy. It's an awesome, awesome company to, to that's boring. I love these boring dividend companies. Speaking of boring, 3M is kind of getting wrecked yet again. The stock is tanking on some consensus, some analyst expectations, and they released that their warning of a slow growth environment through 2024, and their shares yet again have dropped. I don't think 3M is the quality of company that it once was. And again, if you're into the dividend world, I, I you should be taking advantage of this stuff. Look at TD. I've talked about the banks relentlessly. These things are going to start making massive waves as soon as loan loss provisions stop being set aside. These are like literally decade buying opportunities if you're looking for income. And if you're not buying it on an individual stock basis, man, please be buying these dividend ETFs. SCHD, VDY on the Canadian side of the border. I bought a bit more VDY uh, just this week. And you just can't go wrong. And I know people are saying, oh, but they're going down further. Or there's no growth. What boring dividend. It's like, guys, I've told you this. These are like literally decade high dividend yields and inevitably they're going to cut rates. And when you look at these companies that are pumping out crazy amounts of interest right now and they've refined and dined their damn businesses, that's going to hit the bottom line eventually, baby. And we go into the moon. And that's the catalyst that I think will eventually take the markets back to all time highs because no matter how overvalued tech is, the bottom half of the market can pick up some steam and stop putting all that money into freaking interest and paying their debt back. We're going to be in a good place, right? So what am I looking to do here? Well, I'm kind of stuck in this precarious situation where I had to buy some real estate. I liquidated my tax-free savings account where I can make tax-free income in perpetuity for the rest of my life. My favorite saying in the world, and it hurts me inside that I'm not buying in that account right now. So I have to wait till the end of the year so I can re-top it back up. So what I'm doing is right now just stacking cash like a madman. However, it bothers me sitting on the sideline not having exposure to more S&P, uh, more growth companies like Tesla perhaps, or the Qs. So I don't know what to do here. I'm debating on whether I should just buy them now, hold on to them, and then I can sell them at the end of the year and then transfer them over. I don't know, it just kind of irks me a bit that I've got four months left of the year and I'm not buying every single month right now. It's kind of killing me inside, but we'll see how this pans out and what I actually plan on doing. And you can subscribe for those updates, but I'd love to know what you think about this current market environment because my God, it sucks.